TCU got rid of Gary Patterson. And it did not go the way that I expected it to go. This guy is a legend there. He has got a statue built there. Did I think that it was time for Gary Patterson to leave? Yes, likely. They have not had a good season since 2017. Things have kind of been on the on the decline there. And this, this team on paper, talent-wise, is the best that they have ever had on that campus. And he could not get anything done with it. Now, there's been injuries here and there. There's been a few things that, that have not gone correctly. But typically, you would be able to right the ship and get something going in the right direction. And against Kansas State, it looked like that team just did not care at all to be on the field. So now, Gary Patterson you know, was told, hey, we're not going to bring you back next year. And they, they said it was a, a mutual parting of the ways, which I don't buy that at all because if it was, it would look a lot more like what Ed Orgeron and LSU have going on, where he just coached out the rest of the year. Gary Patterson was given the option to coach out the rest of the year, and he said, nah, nah, I'm good. And and then had his agent leak out that hey, this is probably not going to be his last coaching job. Like He is going to try and get another gig somewhere because he does not want to stop coaching. Uh, what what are your thoughts on, on the situation that's going on in Fort Worth? So, the Ed Orgeron situation at LSU isn't a mutual part in the ways either. Like, Ed doesn't want to leave that job. They, they've just agreed, like adults, to separate, and Ed wants his money, and Ed has done things to uh, avoid his contract, and LSU said, we won't bring these clauses up if you finish the job out like a grown-up. Gary Patterson doesn't have those things. Gary Patterson says, you got to pay me no matter what, and I am not taking this. And walked off. So, two totally different situations there. Because the TCU had nothing to offer, offer, offer him. What would, what would they, what could they have offered him that they didn't have to legally give him anyway to get him to finish out the season? I mean, there's nothing that they could have offered him. It's just whether yeah. or not you want to finish the season. Oh well, um, yeah. Why, why would I? Why would I continue to work for, for basically free? Because all the money that you're going to pay me anyway. So, it true. didn't have that. I do think it was time for him to go. It's always hard when you've got somebody who's a legend that's been around as long as he is. He's the greatest coach in TCU history, you know? And, and I don't think it's close. I mean, he's, what he's done there was amazing. And he's earned that statue. And, and I would like to be able to think that in, you know, a decade or whatever from now, they can, you know, bring some of his old things back and bring him back and, and, and you know, let him wait for the crowd and, and people remember the good times. But, at some point in time, all good things come to an end. This is just one of those Harvey Dyke situations where, you know, you, you either die a hero or you live long enough to find yourself become a villain. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what has happened because there are just a lot of people that are not happy with the way that the program is being run right now. And, you know, this is one of those casualties of the sport changing so rapidly really in the last, what, year and a half or so? I mean, we've talked ad nauseum about all the different things that are going on in the state of college football. And and this is one of those casualties because you've got an old-school guy like Patterson that's been there for, what, 20 years? I mean, he's been there for 21 years maybe, I guess. But he's been there forever, and his mindset is very different from the new way of, of doing college football, right? All this NIL stuff, uh, the media availabilities, the just the way that you talk at a press conference, right? Like, he... It seemed this season like he was picking more fights uh, almost after every game for whatever reason. I have no idea what uh, what happened. So I, I'm, I'm curious, but I, I don't know. It, it just seemed like it, it came to a head so quickly. And, and that's what surprised me is, you know, we didn't even get through a season to figure out, okay, what exactly went wrong here? Because, you know, there were a lot of people that were picking TCU to actually compete for, and and some some pace, or some people actually had them pick to win the Big Twelve this season. I, yeah, I thought they were going to be really good. Yeah, I was one of the and they they got guys. Um, I, yeah, so it's interesting. So the, the why they can't win, I'm, I, I got no clue about. Okay, I don't I don't know enough about the the game of the team to, to be able to speak intelligently on that. I do think that the athletic director, the boosters, these guys, they, I think he earned the right 
for them to wait and do this at the end of the season. Yeah. Like, if you wanted him to finish the damn season out, you should let him finish the season out. Well, Lincoln Riley even said, like, it, we're, all these midseason firings, he said, you know, Gary Patterson, who is a legend, uh, being fired in the middle of the season and, and not even finishing out with his team, like, that ain't right. It, it's just not. I, I, I don't like the yeah, mid-year all, firings. All the rest of them, all the rest of them, I think, are completely justified. Okay? All the rest of them are justified. The only reason you would do it now is if there's a coaching candidate that you think you can get that you think somebody else might jump in and take ahead of you, then then that's a different situation. But at the end of the day, I don't think that person's there. I think if you get the big fish that you're going after and he chooses to come, then I don't hey, I, I don't think he was gonna maybe take the LSU job or maybe take the USC job, but he's gonna choose your job because you caught him first. Like these guys don't work like that. They're going to hear all the offers before they make a decision on anything anyway. At what point, like, when in the future do you think we will see a coach actually leave his team in the middle of the season to go take one of these jobs? Like, that's, uh, I, I think soon. it's going to happen. I mean, you know, you know no, I, that's what I said pretty soon. And the reason being is because I, I think, I mean, it's happened in the NFL a couple of times, and it's because recruiting, right? Like, if you want an NFL coach, because of that early signing day, which I think is bullshit, by the way, I think 80% of the kids that sign for early signing day are signing with that school because of the school, not because of the coach. I just believe that, all right? Look look at the players players that sign on early signing day. It's none of your top-tier blue-chip guys unless they were born in the state they were already born in. That they're going to. I just don't understand the purpose of having an early signing day a month and a half before National Signing Day. Like I was all yeah, in favor of an. Er- du- it is the dumbest thing that anybody's ever done, Gary. Yeah, no, that's, football that's what I'm saying. Does some really stupid shit. Like it would have made a lot more sense to do something similar to what basketball does, which is you got one. At, what is it in November or or sometime around there, and then another in April. I think like just do one in August before the season starts, and then do the other one at the beginning of February. Like, if you, why, if you why got, do we need to? Can I, can I ask that? Why do we need to? I don't think, I don't know that we necessarily do. Okay, so, so we don't. That's the answer, okay? The answer is we don't need to. We just have this other one because college football can't help themselves. They just well, got to fuck it up. No, no, no. This, this was uh, brought up. There were kids that wanted to try and get it over with earlier uh, because they... You can They're, commit at any point in time. Yeah, but even even commitments don't like the the schools don't stop, right? They just don't stop trying to recruit you. So they wanted the process to end earlier. But you know. that's, at some point in time, that's on those kids' parents to say this shit is over. And then we live in a world where you, the individual, have so much voice and so much power. If if Alabama had recruited a player and they committed there, and Auburn just kept calling. And Tennessee just kept calling. They just wouldn't let it go. And they were harping this kid. They were driving him nuts. And he just wanted it over. One tweet could end it. One tweet could end it. I wish these sons of bitches would leave me alone. Stop with the phone calls. I've submitted here. I'm going to sign here. Leave me alone. I appreciate your interest in me, but go away. One tweet, done. And now those teams are going to stop doing that shit forever because it makes them look bad. True. True. And I, I do think that there are some kids that don't know how to do that. But I, I think that they're no, coming. You're right. I don't put that on the kids. That's where a mom and a dad grab that phone and they tell the recruiters, if you don't back off, I'm going to put your ass on blast. And I like guess that what? Idea. Those recruiters' buttholes will tighten up so tight you couldn't put a pin in it. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you are not wrong there. You are not wrong there. So let's uh, let's talk about some potential candidates. We do this for all the different job openings that have uh, that have come up. Jeff Trailer signed a long term contract extension with UT San Antonio UTSA. I think it was like ten years, twenty eight million. Yeah, but it ain't a lot of money. It's well, like I mean, two point eight a year. Yeah, that, you could you could triple that in big in in in, in, in the G five uh, at the P five level. Agreed. But this is what's going to be interesting about this job, along with some of these other ones that are coming open, is. Are people going to look at this job as at 
TCU, the Big 12, are they going to look at that as a P5, or are they going to look at that as an upper echelon G5, right? Like, what is well, the money going to look it, like, it, et cetera? Yeah, we don't know that. Uh, but the boosters still got money, right? It's still Texas oil money? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it should be. Okay. It, it's still outside of Dallas, right? Last I checked, that ain't going anywhere. That I knew it was yeah, Dallas you, uh, bigger than San Antonio. Dallas easier to get to than San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not wrong. And, and so, and so, if you offered me six a year, okay, I think I'd leave the two point eight. True, true. You are just, uh, you are probably. I'm just telling you. I, I, now I don't know that Jeff Trailer thinks that way or whatever. I'm just telling you, like his big ass contract. All it did was mean no G five school can pick him up. That's all it means. True. He's not leaving there for Memphis. He's not leaving there for for an Arkansas State. Because those programs historically have been better than UTSA. All right. He's not leaving there for somebody on the plane of them. He's not leaving there for a Troy. Okay. But that doesn't mean if TCU calls or even Texas Tech calls that they won't have the money to, to almost, you know, to over double his salary. It means he's packing his shit. True. True. Some of these other candidates, I, I don't know that Jeff Trailer is even somebody that they are interested in. I think they would be done right. not to be interested. But uh, that's personal preference, obviously. There was a report out that Chris Peterson, former Washington coach, former Boise State coach, could be somebody to watch in this, and it blew my mind. I, yep. it, I was of, curious, who, who the hell put that out? There were multiple people that, that actually talked to agents and whatnot that he would be interested in a job like that because it's somewhat similar to Washington on a smaller scale, not as much. There won't be – the spotlight is not on you as much at TCU as that's at right. USC, Texas, LSU, et cetera, that's right. right? And that's kind you know of what, what I also like for. about this TCU job that everybody's forgetting? What's that? I like, I like, I like private school money. Uh, that's true. Because ain't nobody on the world, on the planet, outside of Brian Kelly and maybe three other people know what Brian Kelly makes in year. True. Same nobody. with Dave Shaw. Yeah. Yep. So yep. I, I can nobody. see it. So I want private school oil money. That's not a that's not a terrible idea. Not a terrible idea. And it's just a matter of listen. It might be the same amount of money everybody else is making. Different kids, you don't know it. I like a. I just want a little bit of privacy in my life. If you told me it's apples to apples, but one W two is brought out all over the world and everybody can see it, and the other one is not, then I always have plausible deniability that you don't know what's my business. True, true. I think that does help. That does help sell the job. Sonny Dykes, of course, SMU coach, is another one that's been brought up. People have said that he is the the leader in the clubhouse right now, and I just don't know that I buy that. Like, there is a real bitter rivalry between SMU and TCU. They're in the same area, like it, it, Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, it's right there. Uh, and I don't think that Gary Patterson likes Sonny Dykes. I don't think he likes how he runs that program. I think it would be... Gary Patterson ain't going to have anything to do with the decision. Agreed. But I, I just... I, I could not imagine them going and hiring somebody that... You don't You don't think the boosters at TCU think it would be really funny and fun and entertaining to take away their biggest rival or most hated rivals coach? You don't think that would be, I'm going to tell you this. Those conversations came up with Lane Kiffin at LSU. Is one of the reasons you go get Lane is because it would piss off old men. That's true. That is true. I mean, this is why, why would why, why, this is who's making these decisions? By the way, the athletic director did not fire Gary uh, Patterson. Gary Patterson. Yeah, that didn't happen. No, some some rich guy walked into his office and said, "Hey, I need you to fire him. Here's a check." Yep. I, I want. This I want to. I want to make this next hire. That's yeah. You you're not wrong about that. The Dykes thing. I just. Uh, it, it seems so out of left field for TCU, but if they wanted to go more offense, you know. I think I've, they're going to go for an offensive guy. I might be wrong about that, but I think they've had 20-some years with a defensive guy. I think they'd like an offensive guy. I will I will tell you the two names that I think. Like, I, I don't think the Dykes will be I've a got a name kid. that you haven't given out yet, so I'm interested to see your two names. Go ahead. Billy Napier. I think first this is off, first off, the perfect job. This. If. If Chris Peterson is interested in this job, he gets the job. Oh, and yes. we stop talking about all these other people and everybody else just shuts up. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, that's that. We, we didn't we didn't really clarify that. We threw his name out there. I'm. It's weird that his agent might put that out there because his agent 
every other agent in the world would put their guy out there so they could get their guy a raise. Chris Peterson is currently unemployed right now from coaching, so this isn't getting him a raise. Correct. So that's why I found his name to be weird to be the first big name out the door. So if he says yes, you tell everybody else, thanks, but no thanks. Billy Napier. Look, Billy's going to get a Billy is going to take one of these big jobs at some point in time. And I think he's going to do really, really well at them. Yeah, I, I think so as well. This seems like the perfect job for him. Like, that's that's what I really think. I think, you know, it's a, it's a small job, but it's in a really fertile recruiting ground. It's a step up for him. I think his offense travels. He's got good defense, and you know that the man can recruit. Like, he, he seems like a perfect fit for it. Uh, another one that that I would push, because I, I do think the Napier situation, LSU might be too big for him. That might be too much of a step up. I don't know that TCU is that much. Like, it, it's a step up from Louisiana. I don't think it's too big of a step up. Like, I, I think I Napier, think Napier would be great at LSU, too, by the way. But oh, yeah. I don't think he's getting the LSU job. Um, I, don't, I don't think so, either. Uh, I think Napier would be really good at Virginia Tech if Fuente ends up somehow getting this TCU job because yeah, that name's I, I, it, I know it's weird and I give you shit all the time saying, you know, this guy's a fit here, a fit there. Hey, I think Napier's is great anywhere. If you ask me, I'd have to go to Virginia or I'd have to go to state in Dallas. It, it's not the city. It's the recruiting. It's why would I, why would I walk out of Texas and go to Virginia? Uh, There's yeah. a ton of talent in the DMV, but it, it ain't, it ain't roll out of bed, send out three text messages and get five, five stars. Like Dallas has got. I mean, it's just too much down there. Yeah, yeah. You uh, you are not wrong. You are not wrong. So aside from Billy Napier and you know Justin Fuente, which I don't think is a realistic option. Fuente ain't getting another chief power, power power five job. He needs to go back to a chief. Yeah, which again turns into he needs to come home to Memphis. We need to fire the shit out of Silverfield. <laughs> he's come back to Memphis. Yeah. You, you you just about done with uh. Well, Ryan Silverfield, I see. I've been done. You leave the temple. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, my uh, my under eight on the season, that's all ready to push. It's all oh, up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one one more win. loss. <laughs> they ain't winning out. I promise you that. Well, I mean, they got, they got SMU this weekend. So. And they go. They're going to get beat by double D. There you go. There you go. Uh, Jamie Jamie Chadwell over at Coastal I love Carolina. Jamie Chadwell. You know uh, that. Uh, offensive guy, runs a really yep. unique style, and I. I think what he does would work really, really well in that conference. I, I think he could have TCU absolutely rolling. The issue is going to be defense. I mean, you, you got to get somebody to be able to run that defense, and defense has been the problem this year. The offense has not been the issue. Well, uh, but here's the thing: Chadwell Chadwell's capable of doing that. His style of offense isn't such a we score so fast that we were you know our defense is on the field all day long, so we true. give up forty points. They they don't. He's an offensive guy. Gary, they're winning all their games with defense. They're winning the games because nobody can score on them. True, true. Uh, even, even I love Chadwell. That, well, that, that, but, but there's a bias there to where, I, you know, is Billy Napier probably a better coach? Maybe I don't know. Is Billy Napier more qualified? Maybe because of, of what he's done, how long he's done it. Probably, maybe. I, I, I like Jamie. I'm. That's the hard thing is, is I can't separate those two. Yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of the same. Either one of those, I think, would be really successful. The next one that could be interesting, and this is my last one on the list, is Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M. You know, was the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. He was at Wake Forest before that. He is the one that actually taught Clark Lee how to be a defensive coordinator. And Clark Lee, of course, got a job before him, like got a head coaching job before. Now it's at Vanderbilt. Slightly different circumstance. I it's a shitty job. <laughs> But uh, I do think Elko could be good in the right situation. I think TCU could be a really good situation. But again, this is another one of those where you would have to hire somebody to run the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, with what you and I have talked about at numerous, numerous times, if you get a really good one, like Baylor has got Jeff Grimes, well, he's already up for head coaching jobs now. So, you know, I don't know that Jeff Grimes will get, like, a TCU job. But I think he could get another head coaching job somewhere else during this carousel, and then it's back to square one for Dave Aranda at Baylor. Yep. So if you hire Mike Elko yep. and you bring in a good offensive coordinator, uh, chances of him sticking around long term not great. So yeah, this is this is listen. Somebody's going to give Elko a job one day. All right, Dave Aranda got a job. Right? That's awesome. Mel Tucker absolutely deserving of a biggest of big boy jobs. 
I and I would love all those guys. I think they're all great coaches. I just think I am afraid. I am personally afraid of losing my play calling to be time because I think it's too damn hard to to replace the play caller. I think they're the most important person on the team. I just believe that. The yeah. has gone that way. That's the reason I don't. I wouldn't like Elko. Also, we just talked about. They just spent twenty something years with a defensive guy. It, it, this is this is one of those things where you know I've, I've been with this blonde for for my entire life. I, I'm my next girl is going to be a redhead. That's just it's going to be different. It's going to be brown. It's going to be something. It's going to be different. Okay, I spent twenty years with this person. I'm not going getting somebody just like. It, all right, mm. the next guy I get is going to be six three. They're going to be one hundred eighty pounds. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they're going to just <laughs> everything about them is going to be different. Gary Patterson. I assure you of that. They're going to be can, 20 years yeah. younger. They're, they're going, they're, I'm going to drop 80 pounds and, and get a lot taller. Like, this is just what's going to happen. It, it so, makes sense. I can't take the Elko one too. So here's the name. I, I don't, oh my God, I feel like an asshole even spitting it out there. But I think it's, do you think Rolo gets one of these Texas jobs? So I don't know that he gets the TCU job, but I don't think Texas Tech is that far off for him. Like it, because I think I think the the guys at Texas Tech the boosters wanted the Bryles connection. I think that the yes. the administration has squashed that, so that ain't happening. Well, this is where and this is where if you're the boosters, you can replace the administration. Uh, true, true. Uh, I and think it's a little more difficult. Guy? You do. <laughs> it's it's a little more difficult to get rid of a chancellor and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, uh, I don't know because I'm going to bet the boosters are the same people that that put the governor in place. You, you might not be wrong about. You think that. most of those donations come from the same place? Here, here's the thing: if you've got a Rolovich out there, uh, would you rather have him, or would you rather replace a? Oh no, no. I would rather have all whatever. of those coaches that we just talked about outside of Elko than Rolo. And I love Rolo. I would rather have all of the names that we just mentioned over Rolovich. But I think his name is going to get brought up for him. the Texas Tech job. I got a different name for you for that. All right, who you got? And it's because I love old man spite. I like Gary Patterson to go take that job. <laughs> shove it right up their ass. I want to play TCU every year, you sons of bitches. You fire me. That's, you know, that's not terrible. I mean, I, that, you want The second his agent put out there, he's not done coaching, my first thought was that his ass didn't sound. That, that could be really interesting. Him in Lubbock could be a lot of fun. He he's, wants to stay in that conference. Or he might not want Lubbock, but... He's going to wait around and see if anybody else gets fired in that conference. He's going to take the best job in the Big 12 that opens up. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. And he's going to stick it up TCU's ass. And I promise you, he will, too. He absolutely will. I he bet, he yeah. might lose all the rest of them, but he's going to win that one. I could, I could, I think he would be really successful there. Like, if nothing else, I think I he'd get him too. bowl games. I really do, too. Because I, I still I really have, do too. I, now, I don't know what happened Texas to TCU. Texas might want to. Texas Tech might want to go young. I think if I'm all these schools, I go young. I just do. You have nothing else to lose. You're you're a middling team in the Big Twelve in a middling conference. Okay, if you go young and you hit Pater, then you've got a hot shit quarter coach for a couple of years before one of the big boys comes and takes. It. Okay, if if, if you're you go Texas old, Tech, you stay middling. Well, here here's the issue: if you're Texas Tech. You still don't really know what like the conference is going to look like, what the next media rights deal is going to look like, what the money will be, etc. Some people might tell them no. Once you get through enough no's and Gary Patterson is sitting there, okay, uh, maybe you start livening up to the situation a little bit. Like, all right, I can I can maybe see this happening. So I don't I don't think it's uh, that far out of the realm of possibilities. I like I said, I just like old man's fight. That's it. That's all. I just, I, I, every day, I just run off the system vinegar. That's it. I could, I could, I could totally see it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.